It's the Channel Mom Show with Jenny Dean Schmidt. We're here for you. Brought to you by Pediatric Dental Group of Colorado. Creating positive and rewarding dental visits for kids of all ages since 1977. We have got a former Denver TV news anchor in the house with us today. A lot of people know her face and her name, Miss Angie Austin. And because Angie was in the TV news business, she really has a heart to do something better than what was on television. She got really, as a mom, because she's a mother of three kids, three precious babies. They look just like her. They're darling. Um, She wanted to do something better and something more good news. So she has a show called The Good News. And Angie, I'm going to let you pitch that. But sure. uh, Angie Austin, welcome to the channel, Mom Show. You've got some good news for moms. Hi, I do. Yeah, my show, I have two of them now. The Good News with Angie Austin airs two times a day, uh, Monday through Friday, 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock. You can always find a live stream at AngieAustinRadio.com. That's the easiest way to find out where I am. Yeah. Angie and I used to work in TV news together, and I love her because she brings good news to moms. Today, for our news moms can use, we won't even play the music. You're going to give moms some good news. Yeah, one story really, I kind of picked out some of my favorites from this week from the show. And one really uh, touched me because we've heard some really horrible bullying stories lately with horrific endings. A young girl that killed herself recently that was involved in possibly a rape who killed herself because she was being bullied and pictures were actually disseminated about that particular incident. Mm -hmm. Well, now they've reopened that case. I could barely read the story because it hurt my heart so much. And those are the stories I had a hard time doing while I was in the news business. Yeah, me too. I'm not saying bury our heads, but I'm saying find out the success story after the fact. Find a solution. Get creative. For instance, my producer's son didn't get enough oxygen when he was born. He's 13 now, and he cannot process information as quickly as other kids and has short-term memory loss. So other kids were bullying him. So my producer got very creative, went to the Cub Scouts where he is, or Boy Scouts now, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. and uh, said, uh, hey, to the parents and the kids, will you become my kid's posse? Almost like bouncers for his kid. So these kids, one of them's huge, by the way. He really wanted that kid, the big kid. (laughs) So they walk him to and from class. And he's not picked on as much anymore because he's not alone and he can't get beat up in the stairwells. So the the, the happy solution to a sad story. Yes, exactly. So that's what I try to do. Take hurts and find the hopes. So this this little guy, oh, he's so sad. He's a high school guy and he has a lisp. And that's the thing, the other thing that really gets to me when they pick out something about a kid that they have no control over. He has a lisp for goodness sake. I mean, he can't help that. So please don't bully him because of that. So he had to change schools because he was bullied so mercilessly. Mm -hmm. And what he decided to do actually changed the culture in the high school and made other people kinder to each other. And he decided on his first day of school that he would do something, hold the door open for every single kid. And you'd think, wow, maybe he'd get bullied even more for doing that. But the kids saw it as like a kindness. They're like, oh, how nice. He held the door for me. So let's go ahead and take a listen to this young man. His name is Josh and how this changed his life by moving schools and starting out with a gesture of kindness and really being brave. Yeah. We started uh, noticing this young man standing at the door, holding the door for um, 20 minutes at a time, five minutes at a time, day after day. We call him doorman. (laughs) The doorman. The doorman. We call him the doorman. School has been hard on Josh Yant. He was bullied every day for years. They just tell me I'm, I'll never be good enough. It kind of tore me apart inside. I just feel if I put myself out there and be something to them, too. And so it began. Morning. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Welcome. On his first day and every day since. Hey, how are you? And why did you choose opening a door? Um, just uh, simple and uh, just a, welcome and just uh, effective. Thank People you. appreciate it. Welcome. I kind of surprised everybody at first because, you know, no one's really that nice at high school. It's high school. <laughs> I thought it was pretty strange. Yeah. But after a while, I knew that he kept on doing it, so I thought it was good. First it was like, oh, he's opening the door. Yeah. But instead of becoming a target again, something remarkable happened. An example, like uh, one person in my hall, like they dropped their binder and then uh, there's like two more, like two people rushing to help that person pick up all the papers. I find more and more people are willing to do that and go out of their comfort zone to say hi to people that they don't know. Since I've seen him do it, I've started opening doors, like the other said. Like you want to be more positive towards other people. 
he changed the culture in the school. Yeah. Uh, one of my girlfriends always laughs at me because she said I cry at every story. You're crying. Yeah, she happens to be here. <laughs> so I think it's funny I looked at her right away because I have tears in my eyes because here's the deal. Not only did he become popular, yeah. he became named the student with best personality in the whole high school. And get this, from being the most bullied kid who was completely tormented in his old school, he had to leave prom king. Prom oh, king. Oh, well, you know, a couple of things. My husband's a high school principal. So yay for that school. And, and my husband's also the head football coach. So he really does recruit people to help kids that might be bullied. bullied. He doesn't have too much of that problem in his school. And I don't want to step on your story. But let me just say this. Yay for that school that they embraced him. And also, moms, take notice. Your, your kid can make it. I mean, he, this kid decided, I'm not going to succumb and be a victim. I'm Absolutely. Gonna, and, 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 and also teach your kids not to bully. Those kids rose up and ended up not bullying him and supporting him and then voting him prom Absolutely. King. And don't be the mom that when someone comes to you and says, your child is doing something that's not right. Oh, no. Not my little princess. <laughs> exactly. No. My little guy's so perfect at home. He's so nice. Yeah, I know. No, my husband no. has that problem. Address it, <laughs> yeah. please. Yeah. I am not that mother. Like immediately, I will address it. Yeah, like, Don't kid, do which that. Which kid did that? Yeah. No, my mom would do that all the time, and my brother would get in trouble. And he yeah. really did the thing. She'd be like, "Oh, they're all just against him." I'm like, "No, mom. He actually did vandalize the church." <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it was just crazy yeah. stuff he would do. And how can you legitimize? Well, he was just there with a spray paint can in the church, and it probably just went off when he sat on it. No, mom. He actually did the, graffiti. Right. You know, right. it's just crazy but stuff. But they, that's a beautiful story, and I'm Thank so you. glad mom's gonna hear that this morning. I love. Love good news. So you have about three, four minutes left. Okay. Let's just do this really quick one. Here's the guy who used to work at Microsoft. He was the big mucky muck at Microsoft. He decided to give up his Microsoft career to do something amazing for kids, for literacy. He has now given away 7.8 million children books. He's given, he hasn't given away the children. Yeah. He's given out uh, 7.8 million books, books. To, to that many children ah. in 10 countries. And so he did an interview and right now he's talking about how to like evaluate happiness, how to find joy. And he's talking about the best advice he'd ever received. And he's basically saying, go to your death and count backwards and figure out from what you want to achieve it by the end of your life and then work your way backwards and actually try to do that. And he's found so much joy by doing things for others and giving up the money. So take a listen. Figure out what you want to say in your deathbed and work backwards from there. <laughs> if you've done that, your life's in alignment and you're happy. I'm on deathbed, which hopefully will not be for several decades. What I want to say is that there are tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions, of peaceful, productive, stable adults that includes both boys and girls who will say, my life changed the day Room to Read came to my village. My life changed the, the, the day that Room to Read came to my village because he's helping these kids learn to read. So that's what he's done. And so when a reporter asked him, are you happy? Extremely extremely happy he told me now you've changed careers i've changed careers uh, we both had, for less money yes for, for quite a bit less money but i always say that i don't have as many benjamins in my wallet as i did when i did tv news but i have a lot of a lot more hope and joy and love in my wallet mm -hmm. and i think that ultimately god honors your efforts to do the right thing yeah and the right thing for us is to do this you for moms and me i'm on christian radio now mm -hmm. but it's pretty much for anyone who wants to listen to happy news well and now you're sharing good news with moms i mean it's, absolutely hey, amen you and i used to get so tired of having to tell people the bad news all the time or news that just didn't really matter like who's won the lottery today you know what i mean right yeah yeah or world's largest pancake exactly like, who, no one wants to eat that <laughs> why are they making the world's largest pancake can't they do something for charity <laughs> and no one wants a slice of the world's largest pancake <laughs> yeah because it's kind of gross yeah or the world's lar largest burrito i don't want that many refried beans it's so disgusting and we had to do these ridiculous yeah. stories but i think my, my advice to anyone would be you know jump off that cliff sometimes and just uh just count on that god has your parachute in your backpack it's so scary to take a risk i started my show making nothing absolutely zero for several months so i made six figures and went to nothing but I knew that if I continued to work at it and do the right thing and do something I had a passion for, mm -hmm. that ultimately I would find a way to make a living at it. And then my husband wouldn't look at the checkbook every month and go, <laughs> oh, whoa, <laughs> nothing again, you know? So I think that you'll be honored for pursuing your passion. And please do it because if you're in a grind and you are in your rocking chair when you're a grandpa, grandma or grandpa, and you're not going to look back at your life and be 
filled with joy, you're going to be filled with regret and sadness. And you don't want to be in the rocking chair full of regret. You want to be there with a the lemonade like, oh, yeah, I did what I wanted to yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. And how many people did I, what's my legacy? Not the money. Yeah. Money does not make people happy no, in and of itself. Never. No. It's nice, though. I like to get my nails I, done and look at them now. But anyway. Look like, at mine. I, <laughs> I haven't even, yeah, mine are worse. I win. No, but it does not make you happy. You're absolutely no. right. But you're going to stay with us. Yes. Because you're going to help me interview. Yes. Because this is what you do for a living. Sure. And you can school me. Yes. I will school you. <laughs> okay.